Wonderful celebration, thank you much. Madam President, let this 169th commencement now begin. Friends, let us join together in prayer. God of the ages, your wisdom is wondrous and life-changing. In your merciful wisdom, you bless the founders of this university. You granted our founders the realization of a most gracious dream, the dream that life and faith and learning belong to your children. And today we see that dream made flesh and blood. For by your spirit, these students rise up to seek the truth, to embrace joy. Blessed are the dreams that come true. Blessed is this schoolhouse on the hill. We praise you, almighty God, for those who lived long ago, for those who live today, and for those who will be living tomorrow so that learning will flourish in this place. May we always gather confidence in the future you plan. May we always be brave and believing people. May we, in a spirit of compassion, be giving and hopeful people. May we follow your gracious spirit to chase the dreams of tomorrow. For today, with grateful hearts, we realize a dream once again, that when we trust you, life is given more abundant. God of heaven and earth, this university gives you thanks. Amen. Good afternoon, and welcome to our undergraduate commencement ceremony. To the family, friends, alumni, and special guests in our audience, it is a great pleasure to greet you and thank you for being part of the Muskingum community as we celebrate these fabulous graduating seniors and their achievements. And congratulations to our seniors' parents. I cannot imagine a finer occasion than the opportunity to see your sons and daughters receive their degree today. And on this Mother's Day weekend, let me be the first to wish you a very happy Mother's Day with your new graduate. <laughs>
Each commencement is a momentous occasion for everyone in the Muskingum community. We are extraordinarily proud of the generations upon generations of Muskies who have crossed the graduation platform to receive their diploma and of those who will do so today. To the class of 2014, today is your day. You have worked hard with dedication and purpose as you have pursued your goal of attaining your bachelor's degree. As you leave these hills, your Muskingum education will be your cornerstone, your cornerstone for your personal and your professional lives. It will ground you and it will guide you. It will be the foundation upon which you evaluate opportunities and make lasting decisions. Throughout your lifetime, as you continue to learn and grow and achieve, it will continue to shape your values and your character. Class of 2014, as you graduate today, we welcome you into the group of extraordinary people who are Muskingum alumni. For nearly 177 years, our graduates have crossed this platform and they have left their footprints on their communities, the nation, and our world. And so, too, will you. And members of the Muskingum University Board of Trustees are here to celebrate with you today. We have the chair of our board, Harold Burlingame. We have Dennis Grant, who is also our commencement speaker. We have Gordon Spillman and a member of the faculty, Dr. Stephan Van Horn. Please join me in thanking them for their talent, energy, and loyalty in leadership of Muskegon. And members of the class of 2014, an exceptional group of individuals has accompanied you on every step of your educational journey, the Muskingum University faculty. They have taught you well. They have inspired you, have they have challenged you, and encouraged you. And today, they are here to celebrate and honor you. And would the Muskingum University faculty please stand so that we might acknowledge you. I'm also thrilled to announce that our softball team, who are the Ohio Atlantic Conference champions, so they're already on the red banners, are now moving forward with the NCAA National Tournament, Tournament competitions, and they have just won their latest game. Congratulations to them. At the baccalaureate service, service this morning, you had the opportunity to hear extraordinarily inspirational words from Sylvia Rapp Sabia, a member of the class of 1972. Guided by the cornerstone of her Muskingum education, Sylvia Sabia has created an exceptional legacy of service, and she has changed the lives of others in profound ways. Here at Muskingum, she majored in biology, graduating magna cum laude. She earned her Master of Physical Therapy degree from Duke University and became the first full-time physical therapist at the Highland Medical Center in Jackson County Hospital in Scottsboro, Alabama, where she led a distinguished 32-year career in patient care. She serves others spiritually, sharing her time and talents as a church deacon, elder, and music leader, sharing her lifelong love of sacred music. We are very honored today to honor you, Sylvia Rapp Sabia, with the Doctor of Science degree. And I invite Harold Burlingame, member of the class of 1962, 
and Chair of the Board of Trustees to come forward and join in conferring this recognition. Whereas Sylvia Rapsavia distinguished herself as a scholar and has embraced a life that is dedicated to the service of others, and whereas Mrs. Savia's leadership led her to break new ground in patient care as she served the Scottsboro, Alabama metropolitan area as a physical therapist for more than three decades, and whereas Mrs. Savia's de she's dedicated her time, her energy, and talents to serving others spiritually through her leadership roles in her Presbyterian church, and whereas Mrs. Savia shares her lifelong love of sacred music to uplift others through worship. Therefore, be it now resolved by the Muskingum University Board of Trustees on this, the 10th day of May 19, uh, 2014, that the degree of Doctor of Science be conferred upon Sylvia Rapp Savia. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of Ohio and the Board of Trustees of Muskingum University, I do hereby confer upon you, Sylvia Rapp Sabia, the degree of Doctor of Science, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Sylvia. We are so very, very proud of you. It is a privilege now to introduce you to Mr. Dennis Grant, a member of the class of 1962. Guided by the cornerstone of his Muskingum education, he has sent an expiring example using his expertise, innovative vision, and dedication to excellence to change this world. Mr. Grant graduated cum laude from Muskingum with a Bachelor of Arts degree in history. He earned his Juris Doctor degree from the University of Michigan Law School. As a labor and employment law attorney with Bailey Cavalieri, Mr. Grant has been recognized by his peers as one of the best lawyers in America. He is a frequent and soft after presenter for legal professional development seminars and has taught labor and employment law for the Ohio State University. Mr. Grant is a dedicated Muskingum alumnus and his leadership has had a profound impact on our university through his exemplary service on our Board of Trustees since 1972. He has mis guided Muskingum wisely through times of difficult challenges and through times of exciting advancements. He has been a steward for all seasons. And the quality of his leadership has helped bring us to this day where we proudly celebrate Muskingum's ongoing excellence with the commencement of the class of 2014. He has shaped Muskingum for the future and touched the lives of countless students, faculty, staff, and alumni in immeasurable ways. And in recognition of his commitment and dedication, he was a 2012 recipient of the Muskingum University Distinguished Service Award. And now, Trustee Grant, will you please come forward so that we may honor you with the conferral of the Doctor of Humane Letters degree. And I invite Chairman Burlingame to join in conferring this recognition. Whereas Dennis Grant's distinctive leadership has changed the lives of others in profound ways, 
And whereas Mr. Grant is nationally recognized by his peers for his expertise in labor and employment law, and whereas Mr. Grant shares his knowledge to advance the education of his fellow attorneys nationwide and of new generations of students entering the legal profession, and whereas Mr. Grant has served the Muskingum community faithfully as well as a member of the Muskingum University Board of Trustees, serving as secretary and as vice chair, profoundly shaping the future of the university with his exemplary stewardship, and I might say a wonderful counselor to us in all times of need. Therefore, be it now resolved by the Muskingum University Board of Trustees on this, the 10th day of May, 2014, that the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters be conferred upon Dennis Grant. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of Ohio and the Board of Trustees of Muskingum University, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to present to you Dr. Dennis Grant. Thank you, Dr. Steele. I was thinking about that, and uh, you know, I've been on the Board of Trustees under uh, four or five presidents all of which were male. I was thinking, gee, I'm going to get to kiss the president here. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chairman, distinguished faculty, honored guests, and celebrated graduates to be, thank you for inviting me. This is a glorious day. I don't care if there's a monsoon outside. This is a glorious day. Uh, for you guys. Several weeks ago, Dr. Steele called me and asked me to give this address. And I said, gee, Ann, I've, I've never given a commencement address before. What should I talk about? Her response was, I may misquote her on this. She said, Dennis, this is the last educational speech many of these people will ever hear and it doesn't really matter what you discuss. <laughs> well, but tomorrow, most of you who are graduating won't remember my name. Even less will remember what I say today. But that's okay, that's how it should be. This day is not about the platform party, including yours truly, it's about you guys. Okay? We're here to celebrate you. You've gone through four long, hard, and sometimes four and a half, long, hard years to get a degree. And I'm going to try to keep it short, and we'll get you there. Okay? First, I think you ought to give yourselves and one another a round of applause, because you made it. Now look, there's some really important people in that audience up there, okay? They're your parents. Let's give them a round of your applause. When, in trying to come up with a theme for this talk, uh, you know, I was scratching my head. Several months ago, a couple of our neighbors in the Columbus area invited us to go to their Presbyterian church because they knew my wife and I, lovely Martha in the front row there, uh, were graduates of Muskingum. And the Muskingum Choir was going to present at that church. And so we went. How many of you were in choir while you were here? How many of you played a musical instrument while you were here? How many of you had Bob Jones as an instructor while you were here? 
Well, I hate to confess this because it dates myself, and I know I look much younger than Bob, but uh, he and I were fraternity brothers at Mace Club back in the late 50s and early 60s. And one of the things you guys will always remember about having gone to Muskingum College is having Bob Jones as one of your instructors. He's a great guy. That said, Zebulon Highvang and the choir did a magnificent job at the Worthington Presbyterian Church. And one of the things that moved me after 50 plus years was their rendition of the alma mater. The phrase, life more abundant, thou to us has given, has a lot more meaning after 50 plus years as a graduate of this institution than it did back in 1962 when I was sitting out there in that audience sweating. All right, so how has Muskingum given you life more abundant? Well, it has so, done so in some ways that you can't yet appreciate. It has also done so in some ways that are already evident. Maybe you met your significant other here, as I did. Maybe you made lifetime friends here. Maybe a teacher, professor, a coach inspired you to do things that you didn't think you would be able to do when you first enrolled in this institution. As you get older, I hope you will agree, as I have come to appreciate, the word inspiration is one of the most important words in our spoken language. And I hope, whether you believe it or not today, at some time you will conclude Muskingum inspired you. Some of the life enhancers that this institution has bestowed upon you uh, may not be evident right now. I won't try to kid anybody in this audience. Earning a baccalaureate degree ain't a four-year joy party. It's hard work, and you should be proud of yourselves for having done that. There's a lot of people out there who haven't been able to do that. Now, in the course of earning that degree, you may have had some disappointments here at Muskegon. I'll bet almost every one of us had. That reminds me of a story, though. I want to quote from uh, one of the brothers of Anne Marshall Saunier. Anne was on our board of trustees. Her grandfather participated in the founding of Muskingum College, and unfortunately, she recently passed away. Um, she was in a family with two older brothers, and she was the only gal. And she was a townie right here in New Concord. The brothers had this philosophy about raising their kid sister. Anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Anne was very strong. Well, I hope your disappointments were, were, disappointments were few and far between, but you will face some in the future, and Muskingum has helped you prepare to cope with them. Muskingum has also undoubtedly strengthened your ability to think analytically and critically. I hope it has given you a thirst for additional knowledge. You will seek additional knowledge every day for the rest of your life. When I was a youngster, I was impressed by the adage over the Cleveland Public Library entrance, which said, a man's judgment is no better than his knowledge. I hope that Muskingum has motivated you to go forward and achieve your personal goals, whatever they may be. In short, Muskingum has given you a box full of tools. Now it's up to you to use them effectively. And I think if you do that, you will be a success in life, at least a personal success in life. How do I know that? Let me quote from a, Mus a Muskie who traveled further, traveled further in one day than most of us will travel in our lifetimes. There's a local New Concord guy named John Glenn Jr. And he said, if you get your start here, you can go anywhere. And he's proof of the pudding. You want more proof of the pudding? As I started reviewing the successful Muskingum graduates that I knew about, the name William kept popping up. There's a plethora of Williams that are related to this institution. William Rainey Harper learned to, a, I'm sorry, learned to read at age three, entered Muskingum at age 10, graduated at age 14, 
got his PhD from Yale at age 18. Well, there are always late bloomers like that. <laughs> the original University of Chicago had gone bankrupt, and uh, William Rainey Harper cajoled some grants out of John D. Rockefeller, who was the oil baron of the day, and started and pre served as president for many years of the new University of Chicago, which is that great educational institution we have now. Another educator, William Oxley Thompson, worked his way through Muskingum while also doing chores in Brownsville, Ohio on the family farm. In fact, he used to stay with the uh, Harpers in that cabin downtown while he was here at Muskingum working on his degree. He made his mark by converting the Ohio State University, I say that for my son's benefit, he's a graduate of that institution, from a smallish agricultural land-grant college into one of the greatest universities in the United States today, and he did that during 25 years, serving as its fifth president. When I was here, I was privileged to know the iconic history professor, William Fitz. Unfortunately, Bill had rather poor eyesight, so he could not engage in sports or other outdoor activities. But, so the story goes, his after-school activity was to read an encyclopedia from cover to cover. Sylvia's agreeing with me. You've heard that too, haven't you, dear? All right. Back in the olden days when Hallie Randall's father, Terry Shaner, was here, he used to wish the campus good night from the Mace House wind tunnel. In those days, it was customary for the eating forts, I never knew why they called them forts, dining halls, to invite faculty members to come. So, the Mace Club invited Bill Fisk to come, and some rapscallion foamed up his mouth with toothpaste and fell on the floor and thrashed around, feigning an epileptic fit. <laughs> and I'm told that Bill ran out of the house. By the time I got to Miss Kingham, the Mace Club had changed dramatically. Do we have any Mace in the audience today? A few, they're not very proud of themselves, so raise your hands very, <laughs> I, I was. Okay. Um, it then is, was as it now is. It was populated solely by serious and socially responsible students. If you don't know what the Mace Wind Tunnel is all about, ask some of these old Mace guys tottering around here, Rudy Gerlach, Steve Kokovich, Bob Jones, Jim Burson. Another Mace Muskie is zookeeper and TV personality, Jack Hanna. You all know Jungle Jack Hanna? Okay. Here's a trivia question. What Muskie named William scored the winning touchdown in the 1961 North-South College All-Star Game? Bill Cannonball Cooper from New Philadelphia. He was named a Little All-American for his athletic prowess here at Muskingum, and he's now in the College Football Hall of Fame. Another trivia question. What Muskie named Bill came to play football, didn't quite make it. He went on to become the college order orator, and then he went to Wall Street, and he saw young boys with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of street name stock certificates those are livestock certificates traveling from one brokerage house to another on bicycles. And Bill had this brilliant idea. He said, why don't we put all of those stock certificates in one depository, and then when somebody in Edward Jones buys uh, stock from a guy who owns it, and it's with Baker, uh, Merrill Lynch, we'll have the Merrill Lynch stock come over and go into the uh, Edward Jones room. And of course, clever man that he was, Bill convinced all the major brokerage houses to put their stock in the depository, and then he convinced them to make him the CEO of the depository. So don't be afraid to take risks and put good ideas to work out there. I want to get off the uh, William kick for a minute and talk about the Ohio Foundation of Independent Colleges. It has what it calls a hall of excellence. You don't have to be a businessman or a businesswoman to be ensconced there. You just have to, you could even be something as lowly as like a United States Senator or a Supreme Court Justice or even an entertainment, entertainment. But you must exude exec excellence in your field. 
It's probably something in the water, but Muskingum has more members in that notable hall than any other institution. I've already mentioned Bill Denser, John Glenn, Jack Hanna. But Muskingum's long magenta line, as President Steele likes to refer to it, includes Hall of Excellent members Phil Caldwell, the first non-Ford uh, family member to head Ford Motor Company, Annie Castor Glenn, uh, outstanding advocate for health disabilities, married to John Glenn, and I think probably largely responsible for his uh, achievements. Chuck Pilliad, Chairman and CEO of Goodyear Tire and Rubber. Jackie Dudick Woods, President of Ameritech. Walt Young, former CEO of Champion Enterprises. Our current chair, board chairman and classmate of mine, Hal Burlingame formerly a Vice President of Human Resources at AT&T, and now Senior Executive Advisor for AT&T Wireless. If you have any trouble with your AT&T Wireless, give Hal a call. <laughs> Hal's a local product. He grew up nearby, attended New Concord High School. We also count among our uh, business leaders Al Warren, who was the Vice President of Labor Relations at the General Motors Corporation and was Hal's uh, predecessor as the chairman of our board. Well, we've talked a lot about uh, muskies named William, mostly men. How about the Wilhelminas? Let's talk about some of Muskingum's successful women. The first one that comes to my mind is Agnes Moorhead, longtime Hollywood actress, earned an Emmy in the television media as, uh, by playing Andorra on the Bewitched program. Martha Moore was on faculty when I was here longest serving member of the Republican National Committee and in the Ohio Hall of Fame, Women's Hall of Fame. Stepping back into athletics for a minute, when uh, Cannonball Cooper was here, our football coach and athletic director was legendary Edgar Sherman. The field is named after Ed Sherman. The recreum, I'm sorry, the, the uh, atrium of this rec center is named after Bill Sher well, Ed Sherman, pardon me. But we spawned a ladies coach that was at least as equal, if not as better. If you walk down the little hallway by the restrooms over there and look at the pictures, all those pictures are of women's teams. There's like three men's teams, wrestling, basketball, and golf, and everything else is ladies' team. And who did that for us? It was a lady named Donna Newberry. She wasn't a Muskie alum, but she made her career here. She was, and I still believe, the all-time winningest coach in NCAA uh, Division III. Um, she had 900 softball victories, 403 women's basketball victories, and that made her the only women's coach in NCAA Division III to win more than 400 games in multiple sports. And, and speaking of basketball, by the way, my fraternity brother, Jim Burson, has a record in basketball that ranks in the top 10 all-time NCAA Division III wins, and he is also in the Ohio Basketball Hall of Fame. Muskingum people also seem to have an affinity for space travel. John Glenn was the first to uh, orbit the Earth. He was the oldest gentleman to fly in space. One of our classmates, Nicky uh, Wenger Mason, was selected as a teacher in space back during the Reagan administration and was considered for the 1986 Challenger flight, but Krista McAfee instead got to go up, and as you may know, that turned into an absolute disaster for our space program. Also, if you start at Muskingum, you can go to medical school, like Western Reserve, it's now called Case Western, become an anesthesiologist, go to work in Zanesville. Through wise investing, you can accumulate sufficient wealth to leave a naming gift for the Chess Center. And if I forgot to mention it, Phil Caldwell left a naming gift for the Caldwell Hall. Having mentioned Bill Fisk, it's one of our outstanding educators here, I'd be remiss not to mention his successor, Laura Lee Porter, or her successor, uh, Laura Hilton. And true to the, to the William lineage, Bill Kerrigan also makes a tremendous contribution to our history department and to this university. One of the dangers when you start naming successful people is you're bound to miss some. As a trustee, I can't be acquainted with every member of the faculty, but I do see many of them in operation. 
in arts and humanity, we're extremely fortunate to have that division headed by a fine professor like Rick Nutt. In education, we are honored to have Shayla uh, Ellenberger head that division. I thank my lucky stars for Shayla every night. I don't think there's anybody else we could get to move our entire library out of the building and agree to move it back in. For that, Shayla, we thank you. And by the way, don't ask for a raise. <laughs> Science division, honored by, we are honored to have that led by Ray Radizak. Can't say enough about some of the programs emanating from that division under his leadership. They include engineering, the nursing program, new vital programs are arising under the faculty there, Jim Dooley, Stephen Van Horn, only to mention those with whom I happen to be personally familiar. Stefan, in geology, is helping to position us to be influential in the oil shale frac fracking industry, which hopefully will bring prosperity back to this region as the glass industry and the ceramic industries once did. Social science, uh, fellow uh, go-to guy there, uh, division chair is Larry Normansell, if you need something accomplished at Muskingum, he's a great place to start. I don't know why we did this, but we're going to let him go on sabbatical, and he will be ably replaced while on a sabbatical by Tom McGrath. All right, I've indulged in a little poetic license by claiming credit for some people who didn't actually get their education here. There's an aura about this place that makes you stay sometimes and lets you grow, and eventually, if you're here long enough and you make enough of an impression on this institution, we'll start treating you like a muskie. So for my final success story of the day, I want you to consider Ann Steele, our first woman president. Two years ago, a gentleman who was about to receive the Distinguished uh, Service Award asked me, because he knew I'd been on a, the board under five different presidents, all men, what I thought of Ann as a president. I said, uh, Fred, she's one of the best. And, and Fred, if you know him, has an insatiable curiosity, so he wouldn't settle for the answer. He said, well, why do you say that? And I told him. I said, before she will let you spend a nickel of this institution's money, you have to convince her that it will return a dime to the institution. Okay. So let me close with this. A while ago, we were flying somewhere, I had forgotten to bring anything significant to read on the plane. My good wife, knowing my love of history, went to the airport bookstore and acquired a biography of Daniel Boone. And as soon as I read the first two pages, I knew I had one thing in common with Daniel Boone, and that was we both were born on November 2nd. So I told Ann about that, and guess what? She said, all three of us have the same birth date. Well, I tried to tie in Daniel Boone one of Muskie as far as I know, because his epitaph is one to which I aspire, the one which I believe Anne aspires, and one to which we hope you will all aspire. His tombstone simply reads this, I've done all the good that I could. So graduates of 2014, we charge you to go forth. Take your place in scams along the magenta line. Go forward and do all the good that you can, okay? The world needs people like you. Remember this, be proud of yourselves, and never forget, Ms. Kingham is proud of each and every one of you. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Grant, for not only your dedicated leadership as a member of our Board of Trustees, but your very fitting and wise capstone for this super class of 2014. We are deeply um, appreciative of all you have done and continue to do for Muskingum. Thank you, Dennis.
Graduates, as you leave these hills, may you always remember the lessons you have learned here on our campus and from our honored guests. Always be conscious that one person, through words and deeds, can have a tremendous impact on our communities, our nation, and our world.